all for joining us today. Uh, this is a what we would normally call a KIS learning event, and uh, we hope that, that your time is well spent here. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, familiar with KIS, uh, we've been around for about 32 years in the same zip code pretty much in Fremont, delivering products and professional services around IT. So we do all the all the, all the usual stuff, the cloud, virtualization, security, storage, networking, mobility. Uh, we even do all the, 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 the physical plumbing as well. So if you need a, to move a data center from one spot to another, we can do that sort of thing as well, as well as all the cabling, um, the security devices and surveillance devices. So we, we kind of do a, a lot of everything when it touches IT. From time to time, we invite one of our partners to come in and join us uh, to basically share the latest and greatest uh, that's an opportunity for you to learn without having to, to meander through oodles of websites and basically get the story directly from, from the ho horse's mouth, so to speak. Uh, and today it's a little different. We, have, we do have a, a technology partner with us. And in this case, here's the distributor. And most of you are probably familiar with distribution, how it works. They, they basically pick up all the heavy lifting for the manufacturer. They do all the, you know, in, instead of a manufacturer having... 10,000 clients, they might only have five. And then so there's five big distributors and then distributors and they go and they buy huge amounts of inventory. And when you order it, it's in stock somewhere close to you. And that's why, unless there's some huge um, issue with the supply chain, that you get your stuff very, very quickly. And that, that's, that's kind of what the distributor does. They, uh, they also deliver a lot of technical services for us. So they actually help us. So in, in some ways, they're, they're very valuable to us because not only can they deliver very quickly, but they also handle all the things like a lot of the accounting and also a lot of the technical stuff. So that's, that's really why uh, it's, it's important for us to pick the right distributor. In this case here, it's Arrow. And Arrow is one of the larger distributors there, like a, I want to say about a $35 billion company. They do, um, do an awful lot of technical stuff as well. So in this case here, we're actually leveraging their expertise to deliver Nutanix expertise to you. So as you're familiar with Nutanix, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with uh, hyper-conversion infrastructure. It's one of those deals that if you haven't implemented it yet, it's kind of a bit like fighting the tide. If you will at some point in time do it. Anyway, so uh, to introduce Arrow Electronics, I'm going to um, pass it over to Brandon and let Brandon uh, say a few little bits and pieces. I hope I didn't steal any of his thunder, but we'll let Brandon yeah. talk about, we'll let you, let you talk about your company and what you guys do. You bet. So we'll, Thanks, Christian. Uh, we'll can everybody you. see my screen? I can see you. I can see your face. <laughs> no screen? Not no yet. screen yet. Shh, shh. Click share. How about now? There you go. All yeah. right, all right, Perfect. all right. There we go. Uh, hey, everybody. As Christian mentioned, my name is Brandon Cooper. I am the channel manager for Nutanix at Aero. And so my sole responsibility is to help Christian and Jane and our partners like KIS experience um, Nutanix in the best way. And um, although Aero, I feel sometimes is kind of unknown in the world of distribution when it comes to like the TD Cynics and the Ingram Microms, but we are a big player, especially with Nutanix. Um, our thinking is five years out, which is just a way to bridge the gap between what's possible and the practical technologies to make it happen. Um, we work with over 210,000 leading technology manufacturers in the industry. And although unknown, we do $37 billion worth of revenue in 2022. So um, we're big, we're a big player in this. Um, when I say we're a big player, we're especially big with Nutanix doing 65% of their market share in North America. We are one of the only distributors for Nutanix that has quote to cash, um, which is really just a fancy way of saying automation. And so our goal with partners like KIS is to turn quotes around for Nutanix to give to KIS. And we want to do that within four hours. And so by doing that within four hours, you know, we're making an experience better for everybody involved, for Nutanix, for KIS, and for end users like yourself. And so, you know, I'm not going to get into too much detail, just wanted to introduce Arrow just a little bit. Um, Nutanix is 100% channel driven, so they don't typically sell directly to end users. Therefore, it has to go through distribution like Arrow. So now you know who Arrow is. Um, let's play a little trivia, eh, Jane? 
couple of yes. questions out there. Hope you guys were listening to uh, who Arrow is. All righty. Christian, let's uh, get started. Oh, 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 oh. Let me get, let me, I'm seeing, I'm not, I'm seeing a screen here. I'm not seeing any questions here. Well, there, what do you mean? There's a screen of what is Nutanix. Ah, now I see it. Thank you. Yes. No problem. Stop sharing. Ah, what percentage of Nutanix is U.S. market? As U.S. market share does Arrow yeah. handle? I think, I think we heard that a minute ago. What share? And we're going to plant. Plug those in in the poll that play, just came up. Gonna play the yeah, Jeopardy music. Yeah, and we have uh, ten minutes. I mean, <laughs> excuse me, ten seconds to answer this. <laughs> no music yet. Sorry about that. Um, forgot to share my sound, but that's okay. I'll Did we get to play? <laughs> yeah, you can play. Well, you, you, you can hum. You can hum it. Yes, if you like it. Yes. Dum 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the answer is we have sixty-five percent. Woohoo! Good job, so, people. So, six, so fifty percent of the people were listening, is what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Uh, let's do the next one. Uh, let's see. This one right here. Ah. Uh -huh. yeah, Some important one. Yes, what is Arrow's SLA on turning Nutanix quotes into partner quotes result in the fast end user quotes? Is it A, four hours, B, 10, C, eight, and D, 24? You have 10 seconds. And of course, plug it in, have a chance. Nice. Yes, and we're good to go. All right, so that is what four hours, and of course yeah, we have seventy-one percent of good. Good job. All right. <laughs> Actually, Yay. let me let me let me point out something, here, Jane. Uh, the fact that so the, these whoever answers these correctly, the right at the at the fastest will will receive an email and a, I believe a twenty-five dollar gift certificate for that. Um, right. whoever answered, yeah. Um, oh, if it's correct, first correct. correct yeah. yeah, first correct. Uh, yeah. And you can be repeat. Um, so everybody has a chance to win. And um, the first five questions are $25 each and the last one is 50. All right, okay. thank you. Now we're back right. to Christian. Uh, please introduce Peter. Or Brandon, please introduce Peter, and let's get going. Let's get talking about Nutanix. Yeah, I'll hand the baton. Uh, Pete Sinesio is our technical solutions architect for Nutanix at Arrow. I will not steal his thunder. I'll just go ahead and pass it off. You can do an intro, and he's going to talk about all the fun stuff that Nutanix can do for end users. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me OK? Yeah, indeed. All right, so we can get this into presentation mode here. There we go. Uh, as Brandon mentioned, I'm a technical solutions architect at Arrow. Um, I've been at Arrow for, gosh, about 12 years now, um, and I've been working in the channel in a, in a pre-sales technical role in a variety of different ways since about 2005. Uh, today, I really just wanted to try and spend some time with you to share with you some, some Nutanix messaging. Uh, just this spring, I've been to actually two different Nutanix mm -hmm. events, and, um, and I, I think there's a lot going on with Nutanix that's new and exciting and also that's still consistent with the with their messaging and and the uh, uh there's a few kind of key value points i wanted to point out here i've got a couple of slides i promise it's not death by powerpoint today um so i've got eight slides but they're going to go very quickly i i can assure you um and then we'll jump in and do a really brief demo as well of uh, prism which is their administrative administrative interface that they use um, again just to kind of try and help you understand the value of Nutanix behind the marketing slides. You know, most suppliers can come up with fancy, fancy marketing slides, much like this one. Um, there's really nothing earth shattering here on this slide. Um, this does give you kind of a really high level at a glance of who Nutanix is. A lot of people think that Nutanix is hyper-converged or Nutanix is a specific product. Um, and I, I, I can't stress enough that that's not necessarily the case. Yes, Nutanix leverages a hyper-converged architecture, but hyperconvergence is really just a vehicle to deliver outcomes for customers. Uh, as you can see, there's some numbers here on the slide. These are, again, not necessarily earth shattering, and certainly um, you'd see similar 
similar items like this on a slide from many different suppliers. But what you wouldn't see is that third item down on the left, which is the net promoter score of 90. That's a seven year average. Uh, and I think last year it was actually 92, I wanna say. Um, net promoter score is a measure of how happy your customers are. Essentially, it's a, it's a survey that asks if a, if a customer would recommend a solution for a friend or colleague. Um, just for um, for reference, I believe VMware uh, has been trending upward, and that's one of the primary competitors of Nutanix is VMware, and they were at 45. Uh, I think I looked up Apple earlier today, and they were at 47, which are both considered very good scores. Nutanix is at 90, so it's double that. Um, hey, P, yeah. um, is it true, and I heard this, I think we were in a meeting together, that they get that score because they have such a huge team of um, technical people. So is that like, yeah, that's, there... that's part of it. So there's a lot part that goes it. into that score. Um, and, uh, and I, I, that's a really great point. I mean, I think that as a culture, it's a focus on customer success. Um, so, you know, this slide shows you the kind of corporate overview stuff and it mentions the net promoter score. This slide, I think really points out exactly what you're talking about, Brandon, the vision and mission. And this is something that I think as a culture, Nutanix does better than anyone else in the market. Yes, they have teams, but it's not just the size of those teams, it's the quality. So when you talk to somebody in support, you get an intelligent person at technical support that helps you solve your problem quickly. Yeah. Um, and that makes a massive difference in customer satisfaction. Um, you know, in, in moving into this role, uh, supporting our, our Nutanix line of business uh, just over a year ago, I um, noticed how people at Nutanix go way outside of their role to help myself and our partners and end customers. It doesn't necessarily matter what someone's title is. The mission is to help the customer. And you can see the vision on the left talks about making hybrid multi-cloud simple. Um, I think, you know, e even taking it a step beyond that, Nutanix wants to make infrastructure management invisible. They believe that customers have much better things to do other than manage infrastructure with their time. And uh, they're really building their platform to help support that. Uh, what I love about the mission statement on the right are the first two words, quite frankly, which is delight customers. Um, and that's, again, this isn't something that's just a mission statement. This is something where down to every person I've talked to at Nutanix, they're passionate about helping customers succeed. It's not just about a product. It's not about selling a license. It's, it's not about um, branding themselves to support one particular vertical or one particular outcome. It's really helping the customers succeed within the platform. Um, because of the way that that can benefit, whether it's TCO, it's simplicity, et cetera. And I'll, I'll talk more about that as we go. Um, getting into some of the challenges that we're seeing in the market and that customers face today, I don't think any of these data points are going to be uh, news to our audience today. What I do want to point out is just the scale and kind of the meaning behind these numbers, right? So yes, there's an application to Avalanche. Uh, we've been hearing about this for a few years now. Data explosion is not a new topic. We've been talking about that for a very long time. Um, but that third one, workload movement, is one of the ones that I think uh, brings with it some inherent additional conversations. One of them being, um, you know, according to the study that was done for, for uh, here, it says 85% of workload placements won't be optimal by 2027. So what that means is that most people are going to be needing to move their workloads, whether it's on-prem or colo or to the cloud, back and forth, and, and refactor and rework that uh, maybe even more than once, right? Um, depending on cost, depending on priority and scale and what's needed for the application. So um, this brings with it a ton of challenges for technical and support teams. Um, you can't just take any application and throw it in the cloud and get great performance. You can't uh, necessarily always bring something on-prem and improve performance. There's a lot that goes into that, but um, there is a, a better way to do it, right? So Nutanix won't necessarily refactor or re-architect all your applications for you. Um, but what it does do is provide you a single platform to execute on a hybrid multi-cloud environment. Um, hybrid multi-cloud is kind of um, the way forward for many, many customers and customers really of all sizes. I've spoken to customers myself that vary from, uh, you know, single person or maybe two or three people support teams up to much larger teams that are all kind of getting onto this uh, architecture where there's a ton of complexity and there can be a lot of risk and a lot of cost um, and a lot of separate tools to manage. Um, we all struggle, a lot of customers struggle with how do I get visibility across my environment? If I have an on-prem application that I decide I want to move to the cloud, how do I do that? When do I do that? Should I do that? Um, maintaining the skill sets of uh, support staff is critically important 
And especially as you get such a diverse and challenging environment, those challenges can lead to a lot of cost as well. Um, and so the Nutanix platform or the Nutanix cloud platform, as you can see it called on the, on the website, is really about simplifying this. It's about uh, trying to help customers deliver on what keeps their lights on and not have to spend so much time and cost, especially on infrastructure management. At the same time, the platform can't be monolithic. It can't be uh, you know, one single product to rule them all, right? If you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> it's gotta be something that supports these hybrid environments and allows for the flexibility and agility that uh, customers really require. Nutanix is yeah. the only solution in the market now that really enables customers to choose their own hypervisor, their own hardware platform, and their own public cloud. So the, there's, there's a lot of advantages to this, um, but uh, one of the big ones is you can you can serve whatever skill sets the customer has. If a customer is familiar with, say, uh, vSphere and wants to leverage VMware's hypervisor on Nutanix, there's no reason not to do that. They don't have to change just because they're purchasing Nutanix or using Nutanix. You get all the benefits of Nutanix, but you still get to leverage your existing skill sets. Further, um, you know, brand loyalty is a big deal in the market and has been a long time. Um, and some people are really focused on a particular hardware vendor that works well. In many cases, however, um, customers don't necessarily care what labels on the outside of the, the, the rack or on the front panel of the uh, server chassis, right? Um, so Nutanix enables the customer to choose the, the right hardware platform. And that's really important because there's been, as we've seen the last few years, supply chain issues. There can be um, a variety of other things that, that cause some of these different market forces to impact how you purchase or can you get what you need in a reasonable amount of time. Again, the, the, the mission here, especially from a customer centric point of view, it's about delivering outcomes. It's not about whether the, the server is from Dell or Lenovo or Cisco or HPE. It's about delivering that outcome for the customer in a way that's simple, that, that helps them optimize and do what they do better. Um, and that's where I think Nutanix has a critical advantage. Cloud choice also is a really key thing. And, and I think one of the main reasons is um, you're not locked into one of those platforms. I've talked to a few customers that start out saying, uh, we're gonna move everything into Amazon or everything into, into uh, Azure. Those aren't necessarily inherently poor choices. However, um, how do you do that? Again, how are you going to evolve on this cloud journey as an organization? Uh, it's not a light switch, right? You can't just flip a switch and everything goes to the cloud and works great. So um, there needs to be some sort of a way to architect this and, and execute on it and migrate applications in a way that's easy. Um, Nutanix offers that. Further, because you have choice, you know, what if a new cloud provider comes out and has something at a lower cost? What if there's a competitive feature set you turn out, it turns out for your application, for your environment, really works better for you in Amazon versus Azure and you want to change gears or Google, right? Um, Nutanix enables you to do that. And, and you can do that in a way where you can still manage your workloads through the Prism interface. It's not a separate tool to license. Further, um, there is actually, and I hopefully that arrow is populating on the right side of my screen there, there is license portability. So uh, a Nutanix license for on-prem is, is essentially the same as a, a Nutanix license for public cloud. So if you did say move a workload or a cluster from on-prem to public cloud, you don't need to purchase a separate license. Um, that's not true about VMware and most of the competitors in the market today. I'm not gonna talk a lot about specific product here today. I'm not gonna spend the you know 10 or 20 minutes it would take to go through and really give you a detailed view of the whole Nutanix portfolio. Um, however, what I do want to share here is just that um, Nutanix does have a very broad portfolio that, that leverages this platform to help deliver these outcomes. You can see some of the outcomes around the outside of the, uh, the rectangle there. And some of the major uh, key components I do want to point out are that in desktop services and VDI, Nutanix is absolutely a market leader and has been for a number of years now. Um, with database services, it's a, it's a, really key thing that customers are struggling with. How do we manage databases? How do we provision databases? There's a ton of risk and cost and complexity in doing that. Um, but with database services or NDB as it's, as it's called now, um, that process is much more simplified and it can reduce your, your provisioning time from something like you know maybe hours or days down to minutes. Um, unified storage is, is one I like to point out specifically just because in all the talk about hyperconvergence or the talk about virtualization, people forget that Nutanix is actually a leader in object storage and file storage as well. Um, the beauty of it being you can you can manage not just 
say, your virtualized server environment, but also your file servers through the Nutanix interface. Nutanix has wonderful um, uh, tool sets as well that go with those solutions. So something like Nutanix Data Lens is worth mentioning, where it really uh, provides you wonderful, rich analytics about your file environment. It can help uh, manage things from a security point of view as well. Um, again, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here, but just to show you the kind of breadth of what Nutanix has done with this platform to tailor it to these different verticals. Um, there is no workload that I've run into yet that won't really run on Nutanix. Um, Nutanix has a lot of, of enhancements under the hood. I get into the kind of technical side of the conversation, which is not really our mission today, but um, they, they are able to scale in not only in a granular way, but in a way that um, the competitor can't. Uh, hey, so, Pete, yeah, are yeah. there statistics on how many um, companies and I guess end users, we could call them, that have hybrid multi-cloud now? There are. Um, I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but I want to say it's 70 some percent, 80 some percent of the, of the market we're seeing uh, oh, wow. is moving towards uh, hybrid multi-cloud. So um, it does tend to be a huge number of customers, like I said, both big and small. Um, and uh, there's a lot of great things about public cloud. Uh, and Nutanix, I think, does a better job of helping customers leverage that and really kind of see the value come to fruition, right? Um, we, we hear a lot about failed projects, unfortunately, right? Um, and uh, I think that Nutanix, because the focus is on making the product approachable and easy to use and um, uh, uh, helping enable the support teams to essentially do what they do best, um, I think that that really means a lot in terms of TCO and in terms of risk management when it comes to the customer. Sweet. Thanks. Um, yeah. And just a reminder, everybody that's listening, you guys can ask questions. Um, it yeah. is a chat. <laughs> so feel free. If you have questions for Pete or myself, um, definitely yeah, put it absolutely. in the chat and, and we'll monitor that and get those answers. Great. Yep. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate you bringing that up. Yes. Uh, uh, feel free to interrupt me. I, I, my wife always says I tend to drone on too much anyway. So um, <laughs> not a problem at all. Um, but uh, the, the Nutanix platform itself is it's just a vehicle to deliver some of these outcomes, right? Um, and the, the packaging for Nutanix software was kind of restructured about a year ago. It wasn't, a, they didn't reinvent the wheel. They didn't change the product per se. They just changed how it's packaged and licensed to simplify things. Most of it's done nowadays by core. Um, unified storage is typically licensed by uh, capacity, uh, but it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And again, you don't need separate licenses for, for public cloud. Just a few final high level points on kind of, I, this is maybe my take on why customers win with Nutanix. Um, you can see them listed across the slide there, but that freedom of choice really is, a, a, I think, a benefit to the customer. It puts the, the power of choice in the hands of the customer so they can uh, architect solutions that work for them and do things in a way that, that works best for their environment. And it's not a, a, a monolithic view where, where, say, Nutanix is trying to stop you from leveraging public cloud, quite the opposite, in fact. Uh, in addition, you also do benefit from a unified platform. So as much as you have that flexibility to leverage, say, your own hypervisor, your own uh, 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 hardware provider, your own public cloud of choice, the unified platform gives you that kind of single pane of glass visibility across all your apps and data um, and a lot of different architectures, too. So it can support, as I said, files, and objects, server virtualization. Um, there's a tremendous amount of uh, uh, benefit available in the platform. And all of it's architected under the, like to leverage the power of simplicity. I was in, in presenting Nutanix solutions and talking about Nutanix, we talk a lot about simplicity and it's easy to use. And I, every supplier says that, right? I'm going to show you in a minute kind of the, some, some additional uh, proof points as to what makes Nutanix so special. But um, the reality is that um, simplicity isn't just, you know, a nice to put on a marketing slide. Simplicity is something that helps the customer save time and save money. It helps to reduce the amount of time that customer has to spend training people or retraining people um, and uh, really move on towards say app development or identifying new revenue streams um, and uh, monetizing them, right? M monetizing data is a, is a really key thing going on in the market now. And um, I, again, I think that that simplicity helps the customer focus on the right things as opposed to on their infrastructure itself. And lastly, of course, customer delight. We talked about this in the open, and um, uh, I think that Nutanix is very unique in this regard. The uh, net promoter score of 90 is 
really incredible. There are very few companies uh, that really can get to that level of customer satisfaction. And that only comes from a uh, uh, really deeply held obsession with customer success. So um, if you do end up working with support, they may end up following up with you a few days later just to, just to make sure that you aren't seeing any, any follow-up issues. I've had a number of run-ins with people all across the Nutanix organization. And um, again, people are going way beyond their job titles to help me and help Arrow and help our partners and customers as well. So uh, I think that the proof is really in the pudding and that's where Nutanix delivers. I'm gonna take a breather. We have a couple of trivia questions to do, I believe, Jane, before we jump into a quick demo. Yep. Awesome. Just share my screen. There you go. All right. <clears throat> what is LCN? Ah. What does it do? Yeah, what? Let's go get it. Yes. We haven't talked yeah. about this yet. Uh, we will. All right. All right. Well, smart audience. I like it. That's some music. <laughs> I have your 10 seconds already passed. I give. Let's see. Oops, sorry. One second. There you go. <laughs> and we had it. Let me just go back. So it's B, correct. So we got pretty good, good job, people. It's not low compute management. <laughs> it's a life cycle <laughs> manager, correct. All right, let's do the next one. Nice work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what is the best hardware vendors to use with Dutanix solutions? And let's launch it. You have 10 seconds to go. Let's go. I gave you five more seconds. Yep, there you go. So it's D. It's D. It correct is D. Of course, whatever hardware vendors work works best for the customer. Which is great to know. All right. So we got two questions. Go ahead, Peter. Awesome. Thank you. It's work. Yes. Hey, and Pete, while you're pulling up that demo, I yeah. noticed earlier you had mentioned <clears throat> VMware. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody on this call is maybe familiar with um, the Broadcom and their acquisition. I know it hasn't taken um, place just yet, but do you know what Nutanix is putting into place to kind of help end users with that that are currently using VMware that have um, a little fear in that Broadcom yeah. acquisition? and you know. Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. So um, the that acquisition alone, you know, I, I most of the customers I talk to are not thrilled about it, and there's a lot of concern going on in the market. What Nutanix mm -hmm. is doing is a couple different things. First, is positioning themselves as a hybrid multi-cloud platform, which means if a customer chooses to continue to run VMware and use their hypervisor, Nutanix won't push you otherwise. I mean, there's, I want to say it's around 45% of, or 40% maybe of Nutanix installations are still leveraging a different hypervisor, a non-Nutanix hypervisor of some type. Um, so um, I think that um, what that does is it gives customers choice, right? So they're not uh, required to say, drop everything VMware and instantly move to a world of Nutanix. They still get the benefits of the platform, even though they continue to leverage VMware. And if it's a larger organization um, that e even if they are looking to say move off of VMware right off the hop, um, you can still leverage VMware for those workloads where it makes sense. There are certain use cases where um, say a, a specific application is only qualified on VMware, for example, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but it enables you to do that in a way that is much more cost effective. So you don't have to leverage VMware for the whole entire environment. Um, so, yeah, so as far as what Nutanix is, is doing, it's it's kind of, yes, Nutanix is obviously a competitor for VMware, 
but there's also some coopetition that goes on there, right? Nutanix was born out of VMware, really. So um, there's a, a, a lot of ways that Nutanix tightly integrates with VMware, and there's a lot of great um, documents that um, are on the website now, actually, about why Nutanix is a great way to deploy VMware, right? Um, so um, there's a lot of benefits that Nutanix can bring that VMware just, just really kind of can't right now, um, not just because of the acquisition, but because of the way their platform is architected. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So uh, what I'm doing here is just showing you all a, uh, again, this is going to be a, not a technical demo. This is just a very high level demonstration of uh, PRISM. So uh, the single pane of glass management I've been talking about is called PRISM. There's essentially really two flavors of this right now. One is PRISM element that you're looking at here, which is the cluster manager. So for a small environment, for a small cluster, you may only ever need to use PRISM element and that's just fine. Um, there is Prism Central, which lets you manage multiple clusters. I do have that deployed here. We'll look at that in just a minute. Um, it's not really a separate tool. The interface is functionally like almost the same. There's a lot of overlap. So if you know how to use one, you know how to use the other. Um, but uh, this is kind of the main homepage. Uh, background to this is this is our, our cluster that we have in our Aero Lab. It's three physical nodes. We've had it since uh, I think it was first deployed uh, maybe last summer or in the fall. And um, uh, the uh, only other thing that I wanted to share with you is that the way that I logged in here is uh, simply to log in with, to what's called the CVM, which is a controller VM. It's part of the Nutanix architecture. Many of you may have already known that. Um, we can uh, certainly go into architecture details another day. But uh, really what I wanted to kind of show you here is the way that this interface works, right? So you won't find many proprietary marketing terms. You won't find, uh, say, a, a specific a uh, marketing scheme that made the product sound good that then they extend out across the portfolio and make every menu confusing, make you fish around to try to find things, right? So here on the main dashboard, um, this is just some high level metrics. We'll get more into the uh, analytics and some of the ways to help troubleshoot in just a minute. Some summary of the storage, you can see we're barely tip of the iceberg on this just because this is a, a cluster we're only using for demos. Um, in general, you can see health information here. Obviously, a green heartbeat is good. Yellow is a warning and red is uh, something critical. Um, but uh, you can also get to some more details on some of these things from the shortcuts at the top. Um, here's a drop down menu. What I want to point out is, you know, there aren't any unique terms here, right? So just about anyone that's that's managing infrastructure today should be able to log into here and understand what kind of information do I want to get to and um, and uh, where to go to get it as well. So I'm not going to go through all these different categories here today. That's a, a much deeper dive than we need to do, but I'll click through some of them just to kind of show you some details on the product. So this is the cluster health uh, check here. And um, Really what this does is that if you did say fail a check or there was a drive that was going bad or something like that, you can look into here and identify um, more information about it, right? You can also run what's called Nutanix cluster checks or NCC, um, which again, it's just a way, it's just a health check on the, on the cluster itself. If you did have say something that was warning or something that was something like that that you wanted to look more into, you can, you can configure, or sorry, you can um, get some more information about it here. Again, it's pretty boring. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and I think that's honestly the beauty in it. Some of the best engineering, in my opinion, is the engineering where the user doesn't have to suffer, right? And um, that's really what Nutanix has done here. So here in the VM uh, table, now there's a, a couple different ways to look at some of these different sections, right? You'll see an overview or a table. I, I'll stick to table view just for this session here today. Um, but uh, this is just simply a list of the VMs we have deployed on our cluster. We've got some Linux VMs. These are the three controller VMs. There's one per physical node. Um, that's really where kind of the intelligence of Nutanix lives. And you can choose to have those shown in the list or not. We can search in, in, in the name list if we had a specific VM we wanted to find. Down below, we have some kind of really high level metrics and, and usage statistics that might help us identify something. Again, if we clicked on a specific VM, we'd get more details there. Creating a VM is really straightforward. I'm not gonna walk through it here today specifically just because I'm trying to kind of keep this short and sweet, but you click create VM, you enter in some basic details, you hit save. That's all there is to it. It really is that easy. And I think the power here is that Nutanix is proving that it, it really can be that easy. Not everyone uh, believes that it's possible. In storage, um, there's a lot to talk about really, if you wanna go deep dive into the technical side. But what I wanted to share with you is just the way that 
um, the, the containers and the information you see here has all been automatically deployed. I haven't really had to do anything with the storage as we set up our cluster. Um, each of these containers is coming out of this, the one big pool of storage that is our cluster. Um, and yes, you can set reservations and there's all kinds of advanced features available there. But the real beauty of it is in order to set up this cluster and to run some VMs, I didn't have to do anything with storage. The platform is smart enough to figure that out for me. Yes, I had to say enter a capacity required for each VM, of course, but in a general sense, there's uh, not really any advanced knowledge needed here in order to deploy and use Nutanix. The network view is a sort of a diagram view of where your VMs are. Now Nutanix leverages something called data locality, which just means that there's a best effort made to deploy a VM and its data on the same physical node where possible. No, it's not a mandatory requirement. No, the cluster doesn't self-destruct if that is not true. Um, but uh, what it does essentially at scale, especially when you get into many VMs and many nodes, that really helps to cut down on network traffic and uh, improve performance dramatically. So um, in this case, what, what you might use this specific kind of view for is really just some troubleshooting. Say one of the hosts was having a really nasty spike in a certain metric and you wanted to get more information about it, you could use this, right? Um, this is all native in the product. This is not a separately licensed feature, right? This is all native to the product. Our network is also set up very simple here for our lab cluster, um, as you might imagine. But um, uh, you can imagine if, say, this was 10 nodes or 20, this all of a sudden can be a very useful tool to help you uh, navigate things. There's also the ability to, say, pin a host to a specific VM um, or what we also call VM to VM anti affinity. If you have two resource hungry VMs, you can tell the platform to make a best effort to keep those separate um, on separate physical hosts, again, where possible. Hardware, again, it's it's uh, the exciting part is really that it's not that exciting. This is exactly what it looks like in our lab. This is a, 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 a 3000 series node. We have three physical nodes in one chassis here. So it's one block with three nodes in it. Um, and you can click into each, say, a specific portion of the hardware here and get some additional data if that's something useful to do. Um, there's other ways to see this information as well as you might imagine. But um, again, it's fairly straightforward. I haven't had to do troubleshooting really for this cluster. So um, it, the, the amazing thing is that you do have access to some of these advanced analytics, even though um, you're not necessarily uh, going to need it up front. But say if you're trying to check and make sure that you're architecting things correctly, Nutanix is a great ways to help you do that. More on that in just a minute too, by the way. But um, if you did want to deploy a file server on Nutanix Architecture, you could do that here. I have not done that for this uh, demo cluster at this point in time. Uh, data protection is always a key thing, right? W whenever you're talking about data, we have to talk about data protection here in Prism Element. This is a protection domain, which is just essentially an entity I created with some VMs in it. You can see them listed here. And um, it's just local snapshots. I'm not sending these snapshots up to the public cloud or up to or to another Nutanix cluster. Of course, there's the possibility to do that. Um, and of course, you can schedule these. You can do manual snapshots, et cetera. This is all just Prism Element. This is kind of the very bare bones and uh, core functionality of the platform. We get into Prism Central. Um, there's a lot more advanced feature set available. Um, the analysis dashboard helps you to really get into more of those uh, nut and bolt troubleshooting situations. Now, what I like about this is again, it's just the interface itself. I've got a number of VMs and metrics selected here, but you could easily configure this to include or not include whatever data you'd like. It's very easy to add and subtract charts to this. Um, it's also very easy to say, instead of the default um, one day, maybe you wanted to look at a specific time slot or a very narrow time slot. There's this slider here where you can look at say a four hour window and just drag this to wherever you feel was appropriate, right? Looking for that spike or looking for that big, whenever that big spike in latency happened on a specific VM, you wanna find out why or what's going on with it. Um, this dashboard really helps you do that. Hmm. Alerts, tasks, these are very boring things. I'm not gonna spend much time here. That's fairly self-explanatory, but what I do wanna spend time on is something that you saw in the trivia question, which is LCM. LCM stands for Lifecycle Manager, as you saw, and this is Nutanix's one-click update and upgrade uh, tool set, right? So this is essentially a framework for not just executing on say a Nutanix software upgrade, but also on doing firmware upgrades on the physical nodes themselves. Um, this tool is amazing. Uh, and, and one of the key values to it is that 
it actually looks at not just the, uh, the say the firmware, the, uh, a specific component, like say here on my screen, you can see AOS or cluster maintenance utilities. It also manages all the codependencies here. So um, this is something that with competing products, a lot of customers spend a lot of time and a lot of money um, working out how to make sure you don't upgrade one component too far or make sure that one component is, uh, if, if it's upgraded, it's not gonna cause an issue with something else that, you, that you're doing in the environment. Um, and uh, this tool really enables you to do that. You would simply come here, you'd perform an inventory, which gets the latest, greatest versions of everything. You come here to updates. I don't have any updates here as I've, I've done uh, all the updates for this cluster. Um, you don't have to use LCM to do updates and upgrades. There are other methods, especially for dark sites and things like that that are effective. Um, but uh, the, the other things I'll point out are kind of, they feel obvious to me when I look at this tool, right? So there's a guide, there's an FAQ and all that documentation is actually useful. I know as a technical person, sometimes when you see a link to something, you kind of eye roll and think, well, wow, that's not gonna be helpful, but it actually is. Um, and uh, uh, this tool, I think, is a, is a tremendous value add uh, for the time it can save. I know I've only got a couple minutes, uh, but what I did want to do is jump over to Prism Central to show you kind of how similar it is. So here we see our, uh, our Nutanix cluster here. If we had multiple clusters, they'd be listed. This whole dashboard here is configurable, so you could move these things around and change the information that's shown here. Um, the menu on the side here shows many of the same categories and things that you saw before, or um, uh, menus and things that we saw in, in Prism Element. So it's very familiar, right? Um, one of the things I did want to point out is that Prism Central adds the ability to have categories. So that means you could assign, say, uh, an operating system type, a uh, project name, et cetera, to a variety of VMs and things. So especially at scale at 100 or 1,000 VMs, right, um, these these environments can get really complex to manage, but categories can help you do that. It can also help you set up policies against those categories. So to, if you did want to keep VMs for project A completely separate and unable to talk with the VMs for project B, right, um, for test development purposes or whatever it might be, you can certainly do that very easily here. There's a full suite of data protection capabilities in here as well. Um, again, we don't have time to really go deep dive on that. But one of the other things that I do want to mention here is uh, that the reporting that is included here in the Nutanix platform is really incredible. In this platform, not only do we have the analysis things that you've seen from, um, uh, it's very similar to what we were just looking at in Prism Element, but you can also go into planning, right? So this enables you to come in and, and create a scenario to look at what would happen to my infrastructure if I added a workload, if I added a, specific um, uh, uh, application to my environment. Am I gonna run out of capacity? Am I gonna run out of compute? How do I need to scale my cluster? This tool helps you do that. It's, it's included with the product. Again, this is not a separately licensed feature, um, but this can really help you to maximize your investment and also make things timely. Nobody likes to buy things in a panic, right? Or be forced into, oh my gosh, it turns out we need 10 more nodes right now, holy moly. Um, that can lead to a lot of stress and a lot of risk for the environment too, let's be honest. So uh, I think that uh, uh, even just, you know, a lot of different platforms will offer reporting. Nutanix is no different there, but the capacity planning feature here uh, really can help you have that future view to, to what, what's going to happen to the environment um, and, and help the customer to really optimize. There's a, a wonderful deep dive uh, sessions that are available from Nutanix if you do get um, uh, kind of curious about how some of these things work in more detail. I'm just about the end of my time slot here, but um, what I do want to share is that uh, please do keep your ears open and, and feel free to uh, ask us questions and reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you learn more about how these features work. Hey, Pete, I know this demo, and I know we're running out of time here, but this demo yeah. is kind of just the look and feel of what Nutanix is. Um, how would, say, a customer that's on the phone, if they want to do an actual demo in their environment, how would they go about doing that? There's a number of different ways um, that we can do. Uh, we, we can leverage Nutanix for, you know, more detailed proof of concept things. So if, say you wanted to look at a demo of Citrix on Nutanix, you wanted a demo of, say, Red Hat on Nutanix, right? Some of those technical alliances. Um, Arrow can certainly help to connect the dots with those. Right now, today, we're actually working on the background on uh, um, deploying Red Hat on um, OpenShift on, on this cluster that you see here in front of you. But... Um, uh, we engage tightly with Nutanix on these things as well. 
Further on the partner site, there are some uh, ways, and, and if you just search Nutanix test drive in any search engine, I'm sure you'll come upon it. Um, there's a way where you can go through kind of a guided exploration of the platform as well that Nutanix hosts. If you just want to kind of get, get into the product yourself without having to say, uh, have a scheduled demo with say a Nutanix rep, right? We can also just kind of turn you, turn you loose. So cool, good question. Yeah. All right. I think it's so trivia Jane, game time, Jane. Yeah, I was going to say, we got a couple more uh, questions from Jane, I think. Yep. Awesome. Let's do this. Yep. Okay, what is seven year average NPS score for Nutanix? That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. There we go. <laughs> and um, we have five more seconds. Three, two, one, and <laughs> And of course, we have 92, 92%. And we did, yes. Or not, sorry, not 92%, 92 score, mm -hmm. which is great. 90% of you guys got it right. That's huge, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, applause. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the last one, $50 reward for this one. What Nutanix tool is used for single pane of glass management across multiple clusters? Go and lunch. There you go. Some music. There you go. This one is going to be two and one. There you go. <laughs> right. And and uh, it's Prism Central. <clears throat> Yay. Yay. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for playing. <laughs> yes, it was a pleasure. All right. Again, thank you very much for joining us. I think this is all. Do you, if you guys have any questions, uh, please go ahead and email us, or you can uh, unmute yourself quickly. So who won, who won the who won the fastest answer? That will be revealed after the um, um, after the end, because I need to. Um, sync up the report and then calculate what is it gives me a timestamp so it doesn't give me a live timestamp so i'll give um there will be an email um thank you email with the um a link to the recording and any other additional links to um resources about new tanks and of course there will be a list of the winners the top winners thank you for asking all right. Thank you, Brandon, Peter, Christian, yeah. for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. No problem. Have a nice all day. Thank you. Yeah, for sure.